talk. I'm very pleased to introduce Dr. Shatil Elal uh, from Cambridge University, which doesn't need any introduction. From, as far as I understand, from the group of uh, Dan Frankel, which also doesn't need any introduction. So basically, no introduction needed. <laughs> we are all set to hear the talk on rocket propulsion. It is, it's like that. So I, I cannot uh, say the title exactly. I have to show because this I cannot pronounce. So rocket propulsion of Janus particles. So please, you have uh, like 40 minutes. Yeah, I will wave you close to the end. Yeah, so. you, you, you need to shout me because I won't see you. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, th th thanks very much, uh, yeah. Professor Kari, for the introduction. And of course, for, thanks for the, all the organizers and the people attending to this uh, fascinating conference. It's, it's mm -hmm. the first time for me. Uh, but I enjoyed very much the diversity of the applications and especially because it's related to uh, computer computational models that explain uh, phenomena that we couldn't otherwise can explain. And I hope that this uh, presentation or this work, which is with Dan Frankel, um, and he wished to talk about this project, so, so he, he unfortunately couldn't come to this conference or to give the talk. Uh, so it's very much like what he was proposing to talk about, and this will be, I, I hope, uh, an interesting in, in also in how we can apply uh, computational models for fluids to, to understand new phenomena. And here I will talk about new mechanism which uh, Dan and Wilson actually proposed it as an idea at the beginning and, and I came over and took over this uh, project. Uh, and it's called Rocket Propulsion of Janus Particles. Uh, I didn't say, but Wilson Poon is from the University of Edinburgh and uh, is doing uh, experimental work and also theory. So it's always good to have a good connection with someone that's doing uh, experiments on what we do. And uh, and the project is funded by the Nanoflow, which is aimed is looking mostly on on uh, theoretic phenomena in in channels and in uh, in swimmers. But but here we actually look at maybe new insights that uh, maybe help to distinguish between phoresis effect and other effects, which is uh, maybe also possible to. To include in this in this uh, uh, in this funding, which is a European fund. Uh, okay, and I will start with uh, just a, a small uh, over overview of motivation of of particle swimmers. I, I've seen uh, Maurizio yesterday talking about uh, fish uh, interaction, aerodynamic interaction due to airfalls, which was fascinating, and uh, and I think that. Swimmers are fascinating in any scale, and as a fact, its diversity of studying in different fields are, are quite fascinating. Also, in microorganisms, of course, uh, trying to mimic bacteria or so understand how they how they go and how they culture, and also, of course, in in molecular level, which we don't even understand how and why these uh, enzymes, for example, can relocate from one location to another. So there are many open questions in any scale uh, regarding a uh, swimmer's object. And uh, of course, in the applicative side, we try to achieve the impossible all the time. Uh, but in the fundamental size, science, uh, we, we look at very, very much more primitive uh, objects just to get some insight about the physics and also to be able to, to synthesize them in lab and, and chemists can synthesize this Janus, or I think I will call it probably Janus in a uh, lot of the lectures, so sorry about that. Uh, so this Janus particles uh, 
uh, are easily synthesized in lab to get kind of two chemistries along the surfaces. <coughs> And apparently they can swim and they can create fascinating behavior as collections, but also they, they, they are affected by various fields, uh, by external effects like uh, if you apply magnetic fields, uh, uh, electric fields, temperature gradients, and so on. So uh, all the collective behavior is fascinating and how the phase separation as a suspicion is also uh, quite uh, attraction. Uh, at the moment in soft matter, but uh, but even looking at the individual particle, it's still a bit uh, uh, challenging, I would say, of how one particle will swim. Will swim. And, and in this introduction, I will give you maybe, uh, uh, I will spend maybe a few slides on how phoretic effect is the central mechanism that proposed to, uh, to this, uh, Proportion of autonomous particles, how they swim by themselves. Uh, and just when we appreciate uh, phoresis, then I can say what we suggest that may contribute as well to, to, to the propulsion of the particle, of the Janus particle. And yeah, phoresis effect is, a, is an interfacial effect. So it's very important, of course, in the small scales when interface becomes a big part of, of, of the ability to transform energy to pressure gradient and then. Uh, velocity of the of in the proportion of the particle and uh, there are a few examples in the literature I just named here too but that shows clearly that that this is may this is probably the case so electrophoresis if you if you have Janus particles that that has two different uh, dif dif two different coats of, of metals and it has some electrochemical potential between them it will act as as as, uh, as an electrochemical cell, and it will move by creating gradients of ion from one side to another. And it's easy to see that if you take uh, a like a needle that covered with copper and platinum, and you have iodine in your solution, it will it will create a copper eye, and it will stop moving whilst you become an insoluble coat of copper eye on, on the surface of the, of the needle. And also when you uh, shine a laser on two thermo, uh, different thermal two conductivities at the different size of, of, the, of the Janus particles, then, then, you, then you can see that you will have a, a gradient of temperature which then leads to, to, to movement of the particle. When you shine the laser, when you stop it, they stop moving. So, so there is probably what we call the excess entropy that causes to different, uh, to different pressure along the interface. Now, I won't take for granted that, that everyone knows what is for this. I didn't know very well the, the inside of it, and I still, I think it's still difficult. And I think we can appreciate it if I will uh, spend two slides on it, but in our context. And our context is the catalytic Janus particle. So they put, if you put the Janus particle that is uh, just inside an H2O2 solution, an hydroperoxide solution, and it has half-coated platinum, apparently it can move. And you don't have here an electric gradient or, or you don't shine a laser on, on, on it. And, and you get quite high speeds, around 10 micrometer per second. Uh, and the top that we found is around 70 micrometer per second. Of course, it depends on, on size effect and, and so on. But, uh, but what you can see is that we have a catalytic reaction on the surface of the, on the, on the platinum surface. And, and that's, that apparently creates what we call diffusive phoresis. So you have a concentration gradient here that created this slip velocity. And the concentration gradient is, is mainly due to the fact that we have a reaction that causes oxygen and water. So you have different uh, products to the reactants, and then you create a, a diffusion gradient, a concentration gradient that causes to, uh, to diffusion field that, may, that causes to diffuse the phoresis. Now, the, 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 the easy thermodynamic intuition says that uh, if you have for example, uh, a solute with a colloid inside, 
and this and the solenoid create high inter interfacial tension on the colloid and you have another side with the same colloid but different solute and it creates a low interfacial tension then spontaneously you will say that the particle will move from one side to another and if you have this gradient it will relocate from one side to another now how quick this will he will will happen then we can we must we must include hydrodynamic of, of the of the problem and the very simple uh, uh, explanation of of how we look at it it's, it's going back to to the work of Anderson and Priev in uh, 1984, which is a, a very well clear paper that shows uh, in, in much more depth what's going to happen. But I show very briefly that, that what happens on the surface is that we have a, a rearrange, rearrangement of the solute according to Boltzmann distribution. And what we have here is, of course, the, uh, the interaction energy potential or interaction potential and the interaction potential is is the solute which is a big big uh, green particles and the solvent is a red one is is a, is basically is the relative interaction pot potential of the solute with the solvent and on the interface uh, compared to the solute with the solvent in the bulk so basically as far we go on the z direction to the bulk the, the interaction potential becomes zero eventually. And, and then that's what, what we have here is, is, uh, is, uh, is a rearrangement of the energy, of the interaction energy potential and the concentration of the, of the solute along the surface. So we have adsorption or desorption depends on, on, on the tip, on the type of the interaction. And that will create a pressure that depends mainly on the concentration in, in, in low concentration system. It will depend only on the concentration. And that's what we call the excess pressure at, the, at X point, at a small slab here. Now, if we variate also a concentration, external concentration on the X side, so along the X uh, axis, then we will have a different excess pressure at each point in the interface. And that's what leads to to the slip velocity that we see uh, with diffusive phoresis. So basically, understanding how the interaction potential works, that's the key point to, to estimate or quantify what will be diffusive phoresis. And that's also the most difficult part because this uh, diffuse layer goes back, goes from the interface to, to the bulk, which can be micrometers uh far away so of course calculating it is is very difficult and also i don't think there are works that show in the hydrodynamics plus the molecular interaction uh so what what we do in in uh, in uh, in experiments is that we have uh, a simple expression relatively to janus particle but what we have here is a lambda squared which is the interaction length or deja green uh, length called as well and and that gives us the estimation of how much uh, uh, a favorable interaction to the surface at, uh, at the concentration gradient of solute. And this is fitted to from, from, from the movement, from the speed of the Jones particle, we fit this parameter. So of course, this is difficult because we also have, to, we also have the, the gradient of, of uh, of concentration that we also need to feel, to know, and that depends on the reaction rate. So we have, so we have quite a lot of uh, parameters that we need to fit in order to know, uh, to know the velocity or to estimate the velocity. That, and, uh, and also, although this is, uh, this is very accepted in literature, recent, uh, I mean, not so recent, but, but Poon in 2014 uh, showed that that what he gets is very different Deja Green lengths uh, compared to previous work uh, by Eben. And, and it shows that maybe, maybe it's not the only mechanism or, or maybe the mechanism is very sensitive that we can't really explain it due to only natural diffusive phoresis. And also, and also uh, it shows that if you change the system, you add natural salt, this 
can change dramatically the, the, the speed that he gets. And sometimes the particles can even stand still or even go back. And it's hard to explain it just by looking at the difference of interaction uh, of the surf in, with the interface of the product and reactants. I mean, it's hard to tell if that's what causes exactly the, the natural diffuser phrases uh, to, to have the velocities that we see in Janus particle. And the, the accepted mechanism that bridging this gap is electrokinetic phrases, which, is, which means that maybe we have variations in platinum around the surface, a variation in thickness. So this can cause to different products that can move that can be ions that move from, from the top of the particle to the center, and that can cause uh, in favor of electrophoresis or another diffusive phoresis contribution. And, and that maybe explain what happens with natural salt. Now, this uh, of course makes this complex, this uh, system even more complex to, to, to estimate the velocity. And of course, we need to do the kinetic rates of such intermediate reactions and to see if we have. Uh, kind of variations of platinum and longest surface and if this kind of variations actually can give this different kinetic rates. So it's quite difficult to, to tell what exactly can come out with combination of different phoretic mechanism. And additionally, if the particles get much bigger, a few microns or more, like 10 microns or more, then you can start to see bubbles that coming out and all the diffuser phoresis mechanism is abundant, and what we get is formation of bubbles that move the particle. So, so there are limitations of telling what exactly happening in this Janus particle. And that's when uh, Dan and, uh, and Wilson probably discussed it, uh, maybe a bit joking that, that, that the fuel that used here is hydroperoxide or hydrazine sometimes and and that's exactly the fuel that um, that propel that propels rockets and uh, the question is uh, why won't be why won't these particles will move just like rocket and i think i think dan took it a bit more seriously and he showed me like a concept uh, model that is a small model that shows that this is maybe not negligible at all in Janus particle now, I thought that I first need to maybe convince myself why, why, why it's not so intuitive that it's possible and why we didn't observe it before in literature, in, in other concepts, in other contexts, or in general particle. And, uh, and the fact that, that uh, I think what we see in water is that particles will have many, many collisions that before reaction will happen. So this reaction uh, is relatively small and the particle is fully thermalized by, by the fluid around it. And even a reaction that is exothermic that release around one electrovolt, it's maybe negligible compared to, to, the, uh, to the amount of collisions that you will get from the fluid. And the second thing that uh, was uh, thinking as well is that usually when we approach um, when we approach water uh, water problem we, we we think about water as as incompressible and we say okay so if you if even if we have a force it it can cancel uh, or the if the energy is uniform then momentum that goes to the other side will move the fluid and momentum will go to the other side to the side of the particle will move a bit the particle but in total, because it's incompressible fluid, this, this might locally be uh, cancelled out very quickly as opposed to what happened in gas. And, uh, and uh, these two maybe, um, maybe uh, claims or arguments may say that, yes, there is something, but, but it might be negligible. However, there is no reason why not to, to do computational model to check it. And, and uh, I was uh, thinking that the, the best way, of course, is, is looking at uh, the simplest way we can still conserve momentum, but uh, show that a compressible fluid can, can, uh, uh, can be enough to show that if this effect is meaningful or not. 
and uh, here we here we chose uh, dissipative particle dynamics. So 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 we have water molecules as a coarse grain. So three here we model three water molecules as one fluid DPD particle, and uh, and and uh, and and of course the dynamics is is uh, is very simple. It's just a combination of three forces that acts as a pair uh, pair interaction between each two DPD particles in the system uh, within uh, within uh, its neighbors, of course, and. Um, and one of the one of the force is uh, is a conservative force due to the coarse grain, and it has a coefficient alpha which we can mimic to be the compressibility of water. And the other two will give us the thermostating that uh, also um, I think talked about uh, with, in this conference was talked about by. Uh, in, ter in uh, relation to to osmosis in in, in small channels, and uh, and it was talked about in detail in detail that it goes through fluctuation dissipation theory. So so we don't need to expand the words on it. But this is working as a Langevin thermostate, and it was important here to have a thermostate so we can so so we can neglect uh, thermophoresis effect thermophoresis effect because. Uh, we create eventually heat in our system using uh, reactions. So, so of course we we might uh, have uh, have temperature gradients. So we can really neglect the temperature gradients if if we have a thermal a thermal state in in our system. And then we, if we want to look at the, at the, at the colloid itself, it's easy to just look at it as. A, as a as an as a frozen particle, so it can be structured as many frozen particles in the sphere, and then we can sum up all the interaction, the repulsive interaction uh, between the, the the colloids and the fluid around it, and then we can uh, have the momentum of it. Now, we we in our simulations, in order to not make them very costly, we use quite small uh, colloids, and. Uh, and of course, if we have uh, rotational degrees of freedom in this colloid, it will rotate a lot. But in reality, in experimental systems, this, we talk about one micrometer Janus particles. They won't rotate much or at all because the rotational diffusion coefficient will go as R to the three. So we go down as R to the three. So 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 here we 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 discard rotational degree of freedom mainly to have more statistics, uh, significant statistics, but it doesn't say, but it's not a problem at all. And also we will, mo most of the study also we spend on, say that it maps to also to, to larger colloids so we can con uh, confidently or comfortably say that, that, that we won't expect any difference if we scale it up to, to colloids of Janus particles. Now, before I, I, I'm activating the particles to, to the Janus particle to, uh, to, to have a reaction, I'm just seeing that it, it obeys a, a colloid settling solution. So, so if I look at the MSD over time, I see that it saturates to, to some diffusion coefficient and uh, we have from ballistic behavior to diffusion behavior at, at long time. And it follows Stokinstein, especially if I check how the uh, the size of our box of the fluid compared to uh, compared to the size of the colloid, I can see that it obeys very well uh, the theory around it uh, behind it of the effect of the image effect of of, uh, of periodic boundary condition, and I can see also that it's somewhere between no slip and slip, and I didn't care much if it's slip or no slip. I mean. The idea is that we are somewhere in between, and that's okay. If we want to have no slip, we need to somehow alter our boundaries. But if we just use a um, very simple repulsive uh, repulsive particles on the surface as a frozen surface, that we get something in between. So it follows stokes einstein relation, and and we are happy now to to turn on a reaction. Now the reaction is. Uh, is known so the reaction energy is known by the entropy of formation for this for this decomposition of uh, hydroperoxide, 
and also we can we can tell the the rate of course which is measured experimentally however we will use much faster rates because of uh, the cost of waiting so long for just one uh, reaction to happen but uh, I'll, I'll show you the result and you understand that it's fine now how do we do the uh, adding up the, the energy so we look at an active zone on the, on the surface of the colloid and we we find the, the closest uh, pair to this active zone and we say okay this will go under reaction and under reaction we will add a kinetic energy to uh, that's what we have in DPD uh, the degrees of freedom are our translation so we add a, a kinetic energy to our pair of particle and that will and that will uh, be in conserving of course the momentum so the total momentum will be zero but the uh, uh, energy kinetic will added will be added as the one electrovolt uh, which is the reaction energy of, of our interest and and uh, the direction of the of the of the reaction will be randomly in space, so it can be any direction. Now, what we see is that actually the colloid is moving. So, if we look at the MSD, we clearly see a ballistic uh, behavior, and it goes up with the frequency of reaction. The diffusion is negligible. The change in, diff in, uh, in the second moment is negligible. And that means that the particle is well thermalized between, between the reactions. And if I plot the, if I plot the, uh, the velocity, the average velocity or the average momentum, the, the velocity, basically the velocity that we have from the colloid uh, as function of, of the frequency, what I see is that it's linearly uh, related and, and in that case, it means that, that each reaction is independent from the other, even in the high, high frequencies that we use compared to, to reaction in reality. And we can basically accumulate it, the momentum transfer from each reaction independently, and what we see is accumulation effect as function of the frequency. So this is quite an efficient way to simulate um, to simulate uh, different frequency and then estimate what will happen in very small frequencies, and we can we can tell that that uh, because it's linear we can we can do a, a simple assessment of of what is the momentum from each reaction. So we know that we have we have a force that applied on the on the particle on the Janus particle, and we can look at it as just overdumped Langevin and. And in that case, we have a force that is uh, that is dissipated by by our by our uh, viscosity, and we can see that we can see that we can tell that basically this this force is exactly the average momentum from each reaction times the frequency. It will be exactly the force that we are looking at divided by the viscosity. So. We can get it directly from the slope of that we did in these simulations of different frequencies, and we can now, by looking at uh, at, uh, at the viscosity, we we did some study in different R to see that it's constant. So so to make sure that that this is a fair assumption here, and then we can just extract what will be the delta p from each reaction. And when we have the delta p from each reaction, we then can, uh, and we study the size effect, and the, and we tell that frequency is linear, so it's enough. We can then scale it up to what happens in Janus particle, and we get that the speed is even higher than uh, to uh, double the the speed that that maximize that maximum uh, reported by by Wilson Poon. So he reported the maximum speed of 70 micrometer per second, and we got around 30 micrometer per second. Uh, just a note, we of course uh, take into account that, that we extrapolate to water, so, so, so viscosity is around 20 smaller, 20 times smaller than, than we expect in DPD. And we did a bit of study on that side as well.
And we, if we look at different energies, we see that, uh, that it goes with the square root. So the average momentum that we get from each reaction goes as the square root of the energy we apply. And that's a good indication that what actually we see is momentum transfer and not accidentally uh, thermophoresis. Diffuser phoresis cannot be at all in our system because uh, we don't have identified particles. We have the DPD are all the same. So, so, so we explain just, we argue maybe that, that what happens that uh, maybe it's not clear, but, but that's our argument that transverse momentum um, is taking account into account, it needs to be taken account until it cancels. So in here, in this simulation, we're looking at a transient period until the transverse momentum is fully carried away and dissipated in the fluid. And until this happens, some of the momentum does go to the particle. And that's the main reason why we can still see that the particle is moving. Now, additionally, we can say that there is also a sound mode that goes away to infinity due to, to the collision. And, and that third part of, of the momentum will go to collision, uh, will go to infinity as sound mode also cannot uh, cancel the, the momentum that goes in the other direction. But this is probably a small part of what we see. And I can show that uh, in this graph. So this graph shows the transient of many, many re average reactions. So what happens to the, to the momentum as we go, as reaction started, from reaction started, starting and, and to large scale when all the momentum dissipated. And, of, and we try to somehow to fit it to stocks, but of course uh, um, in, uh, in fluid simulation, we also know that, we, that there is other effects that stocks is, uh, uh, is too simple to explain what's going on. And we have a long tail effect here as well. And probably we have much something that is more complex than just a simple long time tail. We have a dipole force, so so thing will go not as three over two, but uh, t will go as a different in a different in more complex way. So so what we can see here though it's that we have a displacement because the integration is go to a finite displacement from each reaction, and and there is some oscillations as well that uh, we can see in the particle during that time. But probably the main thing is that uh, we have a decay due to uh, decay of the momentum due to transverse momentum that are taking place in our system, in our fluid. Now, if, if, we, if we look at the fluid itself and not on the, on the particle, on the Janus particle, we can, uh, we can see that there is a sound mode that, that uh, goes in both direction. Uh, that expand in our fluid, and of course the uh, uh, the divergence of the velocity is is not zero anyway close to to the to the colloid, and and with that it it means that there is a lot to to say that probably can change this result. For example, how the reactions happen, how close to the surface, and and also, of course, uh, what geometry of the particle we have uh, that can affect, affect the, the, the behavior of the fluid and the behavior of the particle. Now, one last thing that maybe I want to, uh, to stress out is the sensitivity of, of this, of this uh, mechanism. And there is one work in 2016 that shows that you have a porosivic uh, active side where the reaction happens inside of the of the of the Janus particle and and there and there is the experiments are fascinating and the model is that suggested is that of course uh, diffuser phoresis at uh, at small at small uh, reaction rates or small active sites inside we can see that Diffusive phrases move the particle in that direction, 
and then and then it's somewhere at very large large active side it moves in the other direction so it's the opposite direction what we expect from normal experiment where particles move in that direction but because it's porosivic it, they may say that it moves in this direction now it's very of course difficult to to show that it is foretic motion especially that we said that we showed how complex it can be uh, but here i can see that if i just uh, tweak how the reaction happen on the surface i can get a very different behavior let's just constrain the reaction perpendicular to the force so this the momentum of course is still zero but but it's it will be on a plane perpendicular to the to the active zone of the of the colloid and what we see is of course enhanced uh, velocity of the particle to this direction but if i if if i just uh, constrain the reaction to to a plane uh, parallel to this parallel to the active uh, colloid then then i can actually get even the other uh, the other side velocity, like the, the reverse velocity, and that's probably because we somehow favor uh, collisions with the particle in the other side to to collisions in this side. And I, I, of course, there are more to to learn in order to understand better this system. But one thing is we can say that that uh, sensitivity is a very important part of uh, of of this of uh, this mechanism. And uh, I think that that uh, one thing that we can suggest is to experimentalists is maybe look at something that can distinguish phoresis from this mechanism and see and testing actually what is uh, what is the contribution of this mechanism or phoretic mechanism is looking at at uh, at geometry that according to Wilson Poon it's possible to make or made before and you can. And uh, it's a Pac-Man uh, shape of, of Janus particle where the active side is inside. And that should favor only the, uh, the rocket propulsion compared to theoretic, which should be somehow even the, uh, take the other side, the other direction. And, and, and we can surely learn this mechanism in other contexts. And that's what we are doing at the moment. We are trying to look at a way to create a pump out of uh, a nano pump or nano size pump that can created by active surface that that can release exothermic uh, exothermic uh, that release heat due to exothermic reactions and move flow fluid uh, around uh, along the channel instead of uh, moving a particle itself and uh, of course that if we have if you want an estimation of how how dominant is is this heat or how much of the heat is absorbed in in fluid and not for example in phonons at the surface of the of our particle we we must go to atomistic inf investigation and that's even not easy of course it it takes uh, it will be uh, small and it will be an estimation and still there's a long way to go in order to tell uh, to quantify what will be uh, uh, the amount of heat released that that uh, survived in the fluid now uh, in that sense we we must say that in gases there's the, it's it's very the, they can see that of course uh, um, that that molecules of gas can in catalytic in heterogeneous catalytic system can shoot away from from the surface and it really depends on the type of catalyst uh, catalyzator and and type of the surface and and also the of course uh, the reaction itself but uh, we need to but but in fluids these uh, experiments are impossible so atomistic investigation will be a good way uh, so I will just conclude that momentum transfer cannot be ruled out in in Janus particle, and it's uh, maybe contributing quite a lot to the diffusive phoresis mechanism that that uh, is accepted for propulsion of Janus particle. Uh, we we suggest that that it's very sensitive according to the topography topography of our of of our system. Uh, of our coat of platinum and we think that 
experiments can can reveal this contribution or this mechanism and distinguish between that and theoretic mechanism and uh, that's all i think we published this paper i i didn't mention uh Odell farago but it also helped a lot uh, during the during the project so i want to thank of course also wilson poon and and uh, and of course, and dan frankel for 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 the suggestion of idea and and also for for accompanying this project and thank you very much for listening and i will take a question thank you thank you thank you very much um we have time not very much but still if somebody has questions please just speak aloud Yeah, hello, Paul Bella. Very nice talk. I have a question about the sound waves. I'm just trying to think into this kind of parameter regime, which is not my usual one. How big are the sound wave fluctuations, say, in density compared with the thermal fluctuations? Uh, so the density fluctuations, I didn't show the density fluctuations, uh, but they are very small. Uh, it took, uh, I can't tell exactly the numbers. <laughs> but uh, they are very small in compared to to i mean it was hard actually to see them so so what i've shown is momentum fluctuations and and they are and 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 if i if i if i average out i i don't show you the density fluctuation but there is a density fluctuation it's just very small now if you look at the graph of the uh of the oscillation of the particle, you can you can see you can see oscillations, and and also it's not in the fluid; it's the oscillation of the part of the colloid itself. And if I if I go to lower mass, they are much more um, they are much more observable. So you will see really oscillation of 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 the of the that related to the to the mass of the particle. So so they are not thermal thermal oscillation here it's a, it's actually oscillation of the of the colloid because i checked it in much lower mass i must say that was it's accidentally i chose the wrong mass for the particle and i saw quite big oscillations and when i and then when you increase the mass of the system you you still see this oscillation but so they are not thermal fluctuation if that answers well so what i was thinking about was was in the in the fluid in the fluid yeah okay. This. So, so these are probably first. It's probably shock waves because it's a bit faster th than the speed of sound that we that we see in DPD. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 I do you think that can be a fluctuation of a thermal fluctuation? I don't think that because it's it looks like a wave that propagates. It, it 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 does look very much like a wave. I, I'm just trying to think about yeah you know, what sound wave and sound wave generation are in these kinds of okay. as I said they're not the kind I'm used to thinking about. Okay, there are density fluctuations as well. It's just much harder to to mm. get. Uh, but oh. but mm. but I I have some results that shown a bit. I need it's you probably need much more simulations to show the density fluctuations. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I I I think 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 you are somehow close to or in a compressible regime already around the particle, right? That's what you are. And that there's no other effects like the density effects. So that's uh -huh. what I was saying, uh, probably, yeah. so, if I understand correctly. So yeah. how is that possible that you already compressible and you are talking only about momentum, but not about the shocks and all that, which you actually see? <laughs> uh, yeah so the okay so density effect can happen yes and that i think that that was also what uh, studied by ubo felderov uh, but if but here we don't change the density of our i mean there are density fluctuation because we move two particles 
but I think they are negligible. I, I, I can't say for 100% uh, how negligible they are, but uh, the, this graph, for example, must, uh, you must uh, consider that, that this uh, strongly indicates that what we have is momentum and not density fluctuation, which I think we look uh, definitely not in, in square root relation uh, to the energy. And I think that, that, that uh, the density fluctuation were very small. I, I, I'm sorry that I don't know the number exactly, but, but they were there, but very, very small. And if, and if you look here, the oscillation of the particle shows that there is some probably uh, sound modes that change, um, change, the, change a bit or contribute a bit to the displacement, but, but I, it seems uh, quite small if we compare it to how the momentum of the particle decays. Because if it was the density fluctuations, I would guess that this would be look more oscillating or mas mostly oscillations and not uh, a decay that, that resembling a long, tail, long time tail effect. Well, yeah, I, I also do, yeah. not, do not think it is. Well, anyway, we are, um, probably need to... It's interesting, it's interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, there, are much to, there are much to know, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that they are all relevant to, to understand a bit better. Of course, what we see is very simplistic uh, model still, and there's a lot to learn about it, yes. And but, well, it's, it's, it's kind of, uh, since you're talking about the uh, sizes, so you match to some 2, 5 nano, right? Uh, what you said, so it's, it's nanometer range. And then the experiment, they probably would have micro, so it's a huge one. So uh, it's, it's somehow, uh, yeah. somehow still the feeling is that this huge object by this mechanism would not move. But it's uh, ah yeah 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 yeah. I do I do have uh, I studied much larger, not much much larger, but like around six or seven nanometers. So I did a uh, size study and and. And it it fits it fits to to of course to the model that we see here and, and that was the more important part and of course that it it will fit the, to this simplistic uh, uh, force applied on the on the particle uh, so 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 we of course if if it works in in a regime that is in in the nanometer size the uh, this effect shouldn't be um, it shouldn't be a problem to scale it up where hydrodynamics even more, even uh, stronger in the longer. Yeah, yeah, but compressibility of water does not simply scale like that. So for the big objects. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is a pretty interesting discussion. I myself already much into that, but we have to move on with this schedule. Oh, yeah. It's good, so, yeah. I think, so I think we, maybe, maybe we can discuss it. Yes, side effect is important to explore even further, and I'm happy that, that you intrigued us, <laughs> even if, okay. if you think that it's... Uh, okay. Anyway, thank you very much, you. and thank we move uh, further to the... Yeah, let, let's make that. Uh, so, we uh, move further to the technical session, and I transfer my...